Uh, this is some real diabolical stuff right here. So good morning, good afternoon, family. And I want especially uh, people that are so driven by their ego that they don't understand um, just how deep it is when somebody is totally uh, outside of your nature and they begin to work on things like this and this becomes part of your existence. So good morning, whatever, good afternoon, whatever side of the diaspora that you on. How y'all think about babies without sex? What y'all think about having babies without sex? All right, come on, guys, because this one is for you. Um, scientists are getting closer to the possibility of making a new person from skin or blood cells and without the need for sex. Remember, there's a scripture that says man, we're gonna get man gonna get so wide, he's gonna destroy himself. He's gonna destroy civilization as we know it. It'll be fire next time though, as James Baldwin said, but this shit has gone way too far. This approach goes well beyond veto fertilization, which combines egg and sperm in a test tube because it doesn't require natural eggs or sperm. Called vitro gamogenesis or IVG, it promises to someday provide a cure for many types of infertility, to slow or even turn off biological clocks, and to enable the kind of embryo selected that sends chills up your damn spine. This is crazy. In a three-day meeting last week at the National Academies of Sciences, see, this is what they own. You know, they own this kind of stuff. While we sitting up here still playing with this black and white shit, they constantly using that as a distraction from this kind of stuff right here. In a three-day meeting last week, again, the National Academies of Sciences researchers eagerly discussed their work. Advocates laid out their vision for making IVG useful, and ethicists squirmed in their seats. The search for a perfect race, a perfect baby, a perfect generation is not science fiction. Amaritha Pan, a, a sociologist for the University of Cape Town in South Africa, told the group, the technology for making babies from cells from other eggs and sperm still remains more than a, uh, I mean, decade away. But now, before the science turns the possibility into reality, it is a good time for the public to consider the implications of IBG. And this is what uh, Glenn Cohen, an expert on the intersection of law and bioethics at Harvard Law School. There's certainly a lot of publications and a lot of interest in the scientific community and it's great that we're introducing it to a larger community, Cohen said on the first day of presentations. If people have serious ethical concerns, this is the time for them to spell them out. One of the latest advances in the field, Japanese researchers uh, Kashiko Haishii showed in March that he can transform skin cells from adult male mice into healthy eggs. Mm -hmm. Only a tiny fraction of those mouse eggs he made were viable, but the mice successfully grown from these eggs were healthy and able to have pups and grand pups of their own. Do y'all hear this? Do y'all hear what these genetic mutants are actually doing? He envisions eventually using this approach to treat infertility, infertility in people who have extra sex chromosomes such as XXY or XYY as compared to the typical XX for females or XY for males. It could also enable single-sex couples to have a child who is biologically related 
to both parents. Y'all, listen to this craziness. Hayashi has also developed a method for making viable sperm from adult male mouse cells. And he and others are working to mature eggs made from adult females, all of which fit under the Rubik umbrella of IVG. Why do y'all want to do this? My parent primary wish is to contribute to helping people suffering from infertility. Said Hi Yashi. Said he said in an interview last month, what I'm doing now is very basic biology. In animals, IVG could be used to conserve species in danger of extinction. Um, is what they said. So this is, you know. But whether IVG could ever be considered safe for humans, and now many embryos would have to be sacrificed in the process, remain open questions. And while the science may be driven by curiosity, everyone agrees it will be used to make money from people desperate to continue their biological line or just willing to pay for the offspring of their choice. You know, this, this is a crazy world. It is a perversion of of the sanctity of procreation as a fundamental aspect of human life, said Ben Herbel, a bioethnic and historian of uh, at science at Arizona State. Before the meeting, this is what he said. He he said this this it makes it into an industrial project that responds to, and also inspires and cultivates the desires of future customers mm -mm. wow already several startups backed by private venture capital are looking to commercialize the creation of lab made eggs and sperm perhaps first in farm animals one ethical question raised by IVG is who benefits from this kind of work the child that will be created exists not for its own sake, but for others' sake, said Herbert. That child is the expression of other people's desire. Several people at the conference raised the specter of 90-year-olds having offspring this way, or babies having babies, or long-dead people. Researchers and ethnics alike agree that it's okay to tinker with genes for the sake of curing a sick child. Those genetic changes won't be passed down to future generations. IVG <clears throat> doesn't tinker with genetics. It just uses the programs already in place in the cell to give it a different function. Turning a skin cell into a sperm cell, for instance, but once this can be done in an unlimited way, people could choose among dozens, hundreds of thousands embryos compared with IVF, Wow, which is just a handful of embryos that are created. Wow, this is cutting edge craziness. Uh, the perspective of history does not make the fertility field look good. And in the Wild West, approach doesn't seem to be changing. Veto fertilization, for example, was introduced without the standard clinical trial process. Reproductive technologies have long been a biological, social, and legal moral experiment. We still don't understand the subtleties of even IVF itself, which is 45 years old this year, let alone all the other things we've layered on top of it. A similar non-scientific process established the hormonal regimen that women still get to generate eggs for IVF. 
it is quite a fundamental norm that you don't experiment on children. And yet, this in vitro cultivation of technology is also cultivated in desires and of, and of a potential market that at the end of the day, fundamentally, fundamentally entails experimentation on children. This is crazy. This is crazy. Y'all, what y'all think about that? Having babies with no sex, and they that's really what you call, that's really what you call some future shock stuff. Okay, maybe it's me. Y'all tell me what y'all think. Uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it, and leave your comment below.